fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one the have that happy people have to say. Sure enough, take Midwestern champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound, the outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll still there. Shortly after noon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew their horses to a halt in the Indian Head Hills. Far below them, a crew of men labored to extend the railroad westward. As the masked man watched the work, he smiled approvingly. The work's going ahead faster than I expected, Toto. Ah. Chief Black Crow have village not far from here. Me surprised him not try stop railroad. That's true. The tracks cross Black Crow's hunting ground. Ah. That not good. Black Crow may have decided not to fight the railroad. Yes, Abby, look. Half a dozen Indians riding through the hills below us. Them head for railroad tracks in valley. Toto. Those Indians have rifles. Me think they make trouble. We ride after them. Let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, go. The masked man and Tonto were some distance behind the hard riding war party when the Indians opened fire. Come on, Silver. Come on, go. As the railroaders in the valley ran for cover, the gap separating the Lone Ranger from the attacking party narrowed. The masked man and Tonto fired from the saddle. The surprised warriors looked back at the oncoming riders. Realizing they were between the railroaders and the approaching horsemen, the painted leader signaled his followers to scatter. I'll see how many of the railroad men were hurt. You go after the Indians. He's heavy. Come on, A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger drew rein near the work train. Oh, oh, oh easy. Let it be cool. As he swung from the saddle, a ruddy-faced man named Mike Riley approached him. The masked man, grab your gun. Get covered, mister. I don't want gunplay. Oh, see your guns, boys. We've no fight for this gent. He's an owl hoot, Mike. Owl hoot or not. Mean his reds can pal round up those trigger-happy engines. Uh, thanks. Well, we're the ones who should say thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time a law dodger ever helped us out of a scrap. I'm no outlaw. Does the law around here want you? No. Uh, then uh, how about going to work for me? What? Oh, I'm Mike Riley, top hand on this job. Oh, glad to know you, Riley. I have enough men on the payroll to lay tracks. What I need now are a couple of first-rade gunslingers. Who's the masked man, Mike? Well, no use asking a fellow his name when he's wearing a mask, Pete. Oh, mister, this is my assistant, Pete Crocker. Well, how are you, Pete? I'm glad to be alive. How many of your men were hurt? Uh, two of them, but the wounds aren't serious. 
Hank and Jim are taking care of them, Mike. Good. Mike, uh, why are you looking for gunslingers? I have several reasons, mister. Oh? One is the war party you drove off. I thought the company paid the engines for right-of-way across their hunting ground, Mike. They did. I didn't know that. The president of the company came here personally to sign the agreement with Black Crow. That lion redskin promised us he wouldn't make trouble. Black Crow's a man of his word. His word's not worth a paper it's written on. Why not talk to him about the attack before you accuse him of breaking it? What? This attack may have been made without his knowledge. A fat chance of that. Well, Pot and I know Black Crow well. If he made a promise, he'll keep it. You sure of that? Yes. Well, maybe you're right. If Black Crow can't control the Braves and his tribe, why'd he promise we'd have no redskin trouble? Maybe white men put those engines up to attack in the speed. What? What do you mean? This isn't the first trouble we've had. No, that's right. Oh, uh, what else has happened? Lots of things, mister. The tracks have been torn up, ties stolen. A couple of weeks ago, someone put a charge of blasting powder in the work train. Hmm. Luckily, we found the fuse before it burned down to the powder. It was powder enough to blow the train sky high. Any idea who's behind these things? I have plenty of ideas, but no proof. The prosperous stage line used to operate in this part of the country. It's still operating. A man named Cliff Sunday owns it. That rattler. He's afraid the railroad will put him out of business. Yes, it'll take some business away from him. There'll be enough left to keep the line going. I've heard he's hired a gang of gun slicks. Why? He told the sheriff he hired him to ride his stage as a shotgun guard. But I know better. That's why I want you and your engine pal on our payroll, mister. We won't take jobs with you, Mike. But we'll do all we can to help you. Easy. Get me come on. I'll ride to Black Crow's Indian Village to ask the chief about the war party that came here. Uh, if you wait a minute, I'll go with you. Oh, very well, Mike. Steady there. I want to know what the chief plans to do about the critters who attacked us. All set? Uh, yeah. Uh, come on, boy. Get up there. See you later, boys. All right, all right. Get up there. The masked man and Mike drew rein in Black Crow's Indian village some time later. The Lone Ranger looked around for Tonto. Oh, 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 Something wrong, mister? Tonto followed that attacking party, Mike. He did? Yes, I thought he'd be here by this time. Uh oh. Here comes Chief Black Crow. Ah, this chief plenty glad to see my friend. It's been a long time since we met Great Chief. That's right. Oh, uh, do you know Mike Riley? Me meet him at powwow with men who own iron horse. I thought you'd forgotten that meeting, Chief. What do you mean? I'll be glad to tell you all about it. This afternoon, while we were working at the end of track, a half a dozen engines attacked us. That's not true. I saw them. They shot two of my boys. Oh, that's right, Chief Blackrow. No Indian leave village this afternoon. Are you sure? We have pony races this afternoon. Me no brave stay in village to see him. Is uh, Tonto in the village? Me not see Tonto for a long time. Him not here. What do you make of things, mister? I might have an answer to that after I've talked to Tonto, Mike. Where do you suppose he is? I don't know. Well, he might go back to the end of track to look for you. We'll go there and wait for him. Mass man and Tonto, friends of this chief. If they're trouble, me want to help. Well, we don't know that Tonto's in trouble. Me get horse. Go with you. We'll wait for you, chief. War party came from somewhere? They may not have been Indians. What? They may have been white men. With dark skin? They might have stained their faces. But they rode engine style on ponies. Yes, they rode well enough to fool me and fool Toto. Uh, me, ready, leave village. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, Mike. Uh, steady, old boy. I'm all set, mister. And let's go. Uh, one, two, uh, get up. Uh, Come on. Meanwhile, Toto trailed two of the riders who had attacked the work train. Sometime later, the tracks led him into a large stand of timber. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Easy. Realizing he might easily ride into an ambush, he moved carefully. Then he saw a small cabin among the trees ahead. Beside it were the ponies he had followed. Oh, Scout. Oh, fella. Easy, Scout. He dismounted quietly. Then, leaving Scout concealed among the trees, he crept toward the building. Uh, there, Captain. There. Inside.
Inside the cabin, Cliff Sunday, the heavy-set owner of the stage line, greeted the returning war party. Red Lennon, the leader of the well-disguised white men, took off his buckskin jacket and washed the stain from his hands and face. Good thing the stain comes off easy. While the rest of you boys wash, I'll tell Cliff what happened. Yeah, do that. Well, how many of the railroaders did you kill, Red? We didn't kill any of them. Why not? Mike Riley's trying to beat you at your own game, Cliff. What do you mean? He's hired gunslingers to protect the workmen. The boys and I rode out of the hills planning to surprise the railroaders. We started throwing lead at them, and then... Yeah, what happened? We were surprised. Yeah? A masked man and a redskin came downhill behind us, fired from the saddle. We cleared out. From now on, we'll have to be mighty careful how we move against Riley. Well, Mike's men won't stay around long if they're not paid. Uh, you mean the uh, gun slicks? I mean the railroad workers. Hey, you found out the uh, payroll is coming into town aboard the westbound train at midnight tonight. Uh huh. And we'll take it. Good. Uh, after the payroll comes into town, head for the express office. As Cliff outlined a plan for stealing the railroad payroll, Red Lennon heard a noise outside the open cabin window. He turned to his men. Maybe someone's listening outside the window. Keep talking, Cliff. The boys and I will go outside. All right, Red. Oh, hey. Oh, that is Well, get Red and his men opened the cabin door quietly and hurried outside. A moment later, they found Tonto and brought him into the cabin. He must have heard every word we said, boys. You tell Mike Riley what he knows. He's not going to tell anyone anything. This redskin's done for. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Disarmed and captured by Cliff Sunday and his gunslingers, Tonto had no hope of escaping. As he studied the tight-lipped Indian, the stage owner asked, How do you find this place? Speak up, Injun. Me, not Tom. He heard what we said about getting the payroll. That's right, Gopher. But you boys might be able to use him. What do you mean, Cliff? By framing him for the job, you'll be able to cover your tracks. Yeah, maybe you're right. We'll get back to town, Red. Gopher will stay here with the Redskin. Why not take him to town? If you want to frame him for the holdup, he can't be seen riding into town with him. Yeah, that's so. Now, wait till it's dark and bring him to my place. Now, what are you going to do with the engine after I bring him to town, Cliff? We'll kill him and the station agent. So they can't tell what they know about the whole of oh, 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 oh. When the Lone Ranger, Chief Black Crow, and Mike Riley reached the end of track, they learned that Tonto had not returned. Where do you think he is, mister? I don't know. Maybe Tonto in trouble. There's only one way to find out whether he is or not, Chief Black Crow. How's that? I'll follow his trail. Me go with you. That's all right. All right, steady easy, steady. Get up. Get up. Get up. Darkness was falling when the masked man and his companions entered the dense timberland. You have a hard time seeing tracks now. Oh, Why you stop? Listen. Hey, a horse is nearby. That scout. Huh? Tonto's horse. Silver, know him near. All right, Silver. Find your boy. Come on. There you go, sir. Your friend 
Pete around here. Why doesn't he let us know? Maybe him not able let us know. Good for you, Silver. Uh, there's Scout. Oh, 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 now we look for Tonto. Do you think he's nearby? Look through those trees. Hey, I see a light. There's cabin ahead. Yes, we look for Tonto there. Come on. glance through the window beneath which Tonto knelt when the outlaws found him revealed the captive Indian and his guard. The masked man drew his gun. His voice was sharp. Get your hands up. What? Don't reach for that gun. Uh, to the Indian's pal. Finish that jaw and I'll break your arm. I'll take that chance. As Gopher staggered back under the impact of a silver bullet, Mike Riley entered the cabin with his gun drawn. From the window, the masked man called. Keep him covered, Mike, while the chief and I come inside. He's covered, mister. Come on, chief. Uh, You're one of Cliff's Sunday's hired gun slicks, aren't you? I'm not talking. You'll not have to. It's my guess Tonto will be able to tell plenty when that gag's off his mouth. I'll have it off in a minute, Tonto. There. Now, cut those ropes. Oh, me glad you hear, Kim. How did this skunk capture you, Tonto? Uh, him, one of men dressed like Indian, who attack work train. Me follow him here. Then me move close to cabin, listen to Crook's talk. As briefly as possible, Tonto told what he had overheard. So Cliff Sunday went back to town to steal the payroll. Ah. Him expect this feller, Gopher, to bring me there. Then, them rob express office. Plan to shoot guard, leave me there to take blame for robbery. They must be planning to dress as Indians again. Isn't that right? But the jugheads ought to know you tell the truth about... Dead men don't talk, Mike. Dirty skunk. Is the sheriff a friend of yours? Yeah. We'll take Gopher to him. If he'll cooperate, we'll get the rest of the gang. It was nearly midnight when the Lone Ranger, Toto, Mike Riley, Chief Black Crow, and Gopher dismounted behind the jail in town and entered the building with a prisoner. Hi there, Mike. Sheriff, we brought you prisoners. Uh, hello, Chief Black Crow. Oh. Hey, who's the masked man? He's a friend of mine, Sheriff. We're a friend of yours or not, that man. He's not wanted in these parts, so forget the mask. This is the crook. This is one of Cliff Sunday's men. We've plenty to tell you about that varmint and his outlaw pal. When Gopher was behind bars, Mike told the sheriff about the men who attacked the work train, how they had captured Tonto, and about the robbery they planned. They'll head for the express office after the payroll's taken from the train. Well, I knew Cliff Sunday was against the railroad, but I didn't figure he was a crook. Cooperate with the sheriff, and we'll show you just how crooked he is. Well, I'll go along with Mike, but that mask of yours... You can't hold a mask against a man, Sheriff. If he weren't a law dodger, he wouldn't cover his face. Mask man, not crook. Him, Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Mister, is that true? That's right, Sheriff. Well, why didn't you say so? Jump in Jupiter... I'll be glad to cooperate with you. Thanks, Sheriff. The, the Lone Ranger. Glory be, I didn't know that. Mike, the train. Come on, Mike. We'll keep an eye on the express office. Half an hour after the train pulled into town, Cliff Sunday read Lennon and his men stood in the darkness near the express office, disguised as Indians. Looking around, the stage line owner asked, What's keeping Gopher? Well, why wait for him? We can handle this job without his help. Well, we were going to frame that engine for the robbery. We can't frame him if he's not here. The guard's the only one left in the express office. Hey, who's that? A waiter from the cafe. Uh, he's carrying a pot of coffee. He looks like he's taking it to the express office. He is. Come on, boys. This is our chance to get inside without making any noise. Yeah. Come on, Cliff. I brought the coffee you wanted, Clem. Uh, thanks a lot, Jenny. All right. All right, step inside. Hey, huh? You're both covered. Hey, engines. Engines, my eye. They talk like white men. Yeah, you're smart, Clem. Too smart. Step back into the office and keep quiet. <laughs> what are you after? The railroad payroll. Close the door, Red. Not so fast, Hit Red. Oh, that's the sheriff, the mass man. Shoot your way out of here. Oh, yeah. Before the disguised Indians could fire, the masked man's colts were in action. 
Silver bullets hit two outlaws, while the sheriff, Tonto, and Mike wounded the other three. My shoulder, I'm, I'm hitting you, busting my hand. You want more gunplay? Uh, I quit. I give up. Take your guns, Tonto. Uh, let me get them. Uh, how did you get free? Uh, where's Gopher? In jail. Where you and your pals are going. Yeah, but, Sheriff, I'm, I'm hurt. So am I. You're well enough to walk to jail. We'll take care of your wounds there. When the prisoners were behind bars and their wounds bandaged, Mike Riley, the sheriff, Chief Black Crow, and the waiter from the cafe sipped hot coffee in the lawman's office. <laughs> Mike chuckled merrily as he raised a cup to his lips. Sheriff, I never saw a more bedraggled bunch of redskins. <laughs> Neither have I, Mike. <clears throat> no offense meant, Chief Black Crow. Uh, <laughs> me glad you capture a white man who pulls his Indian. Well, if they had their way... They'd have us believe new engines are making all the trouble for the railroad. My people not fight railroad. Oh, the masked man told me you wouldn't break your agreement with us, Chief Black Crow. <laughs> me glad, masked man, trust this chief. <laughs> Who wouldn't be glad to be trusted by the Lone Ranger? copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.